Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be watching and reacting to how powerful the HMS Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier is. It's, it's so new. It's so new compared to many of the aircraft carriers out there in the world today. And it looks beautiful. So good, especially with those, those F-35s. It is definitely a thing of beauty. It's very satisfying to me to see the British uh, aircraft carrier strike group out. And hopefully they show them in this video. But this is just how powerful this new, to me, I think it's, it's pretty new for an aircraft carrier. It's very new. The systems on it, what it has to offer, perhaps its objectives. I got more interested in wanting to watch specifically about this beautiful aircraft carrier here that we're looking at after I reacted to a recent video about the British. I mean, they've always been been extremely powerful, top of their game. And I always say that the British military always punches, and I mean always, punches well above their weight. Let's jump into this military analysis. Right. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Military Analysis Channel. It's widely believed that the US Navy operates the most advanced and powerful aircraft carriers that sail the world right now. The Nimitz class, along with the Gerald R. Ford class, are the best carriers of the US and domain globally. But when it comes to the rest of the world, which carrier is the most advanced and effective? It's almost undoubtedly the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier operated by the Royal Navy. There we go. These, these, I don't know if this is, this looks like a strike group, but these scenes are so amazing to see. It's just incredible. It shows seeing these aircraft carrier strike groups to me, as far as the Navy goes, military, but especially the Navy shows power, shows how much power they actually have because not a lot of countries could do this. Not many do have this. I know other countries do have aircraft carriers as well, but like he said, top tier right here. The vessel is the most successful and active carrier in Europe and is a level above many from other Ooh. continents. Woo. So the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers came into production started in 2009 and was finished in 2017 when the first carrier started serving for the Navy. The carriers were preceded by the Invincible class carriers that were the center of the UK carrier strike groups before the arrival of the new Elizabeth class of vessels. The Queen Elizabeth class was planned to have two carriers, and that's how it happened. The lead ship, HMS Queen Elizabeth, and the second ship of the class, the HMS Prince of Wales. And I know the, the HMS Prince of Wales recently had trouble, something with like its band or something like that. But these are, I consider them, very new still. I always compare this to they're, they're going to have issues. They're, you know, state of the art, all new technology and a lot of these things. Just there's so much that can go wrong that you should fix, you know, before they might and hopefully they never need to be um, used. But if they ever do, you want to get these kinks out. You want to figure it out. Um, that's what like the years after are for. So I don't think that's a big deal at all. I always compare it to the US F-35 seemed like for 10 years plus, they were just getting hammered. All you saw was negative news, terrible, over costs, um, it wasn't working, how effective are they? And now you you almost never see bad news about the F-35. It's very rare. All these countries are buying it. Little issues, um, they're still getting out the kinks, of course, but I, I don't see that as much of an issue at all. Get it out now while you can. If they ever need to be used, you wanna get that out and fix it. The ships were built from the Aircraft Carrier Alliance. The military ships have a displacement of 65,000 tons, an overall height of 280 meters. Their standard range of operation is 12,000 miles. Except for the flight deck, internally the ship has nine decks with an overall capacity oh, of wow. 16,000 square meters. The installed power engines are two Rolls-Royce Marine Trent MT-30, 48,000 horsepower engines, and four Watsila 38 Marine diesel engines. And what I love about this, if I'm correct, everything just seems like it's made in-house. In, it, it's just British. Everything's just super British about this. The Rolls-Royce engines, I guess they are. It seems like everything about it, which makes sense, especially with anything having to do with the military, but it just makes it so much better. The carriers have three main radars. 
the BAE Systems Thals S1850M for long range and wide scans, the BAE Systems Artisan 3D Type 997 Maritime Medium Range Active Electronically Scanned Array and Typical Navigation Radar. And quick, uh, quicking, a quick stop here. What are the, the two towers for? I, I'm just so used to the U.S. aircraft carriers that I grew up with. You just have one um, ATC, I guess they're called, even on ships, the air traffic controller kind of tower. I would just like to know what, what's used for what and why there's two. What's, what's the purpose of that? The first radar claims to be capable of simultaneously detecting up to 1,000 aerial targets in a range of 250 miles. The only defense weapons that these ships carry as of 2021 are the Beautiful. Phalanx C-1WS system, with miniguns able to defend the carrier against aerial targets. Now, what aircraft does the Queen Elizabeth carry? Oh, yeah. Until 2010, the Royal Navy had two options for carrier-based aircraft, the Harrier GR-7 and the GR-9 jets. But after their final retirement, the Royal Air Force selected the American F-35B aircraft for the carrier. The F-35B is the version of the F-35 Lightning II, capable of performing short takeoffs and vertical landings, STOVL. Although the F-35C is the typical carrier-based version of the F-35, the United Kingdom selected the F-35B variant because the carrier had no arresting gear like the Catobar system. In standard missions, the Elizabeth class can carry up to 24 F-35Bs, but there is a maximum capacity of 36 aircraft in emergency. I don't know about you guys, but I think the uh, F-35 is a beautiful and daunting looking aircraft. I'm probably biased, but I think it just, it's, it looks amazing. The main configuration would be 14 Augusta Westland AW-101, also called Merlin from some European armed forces. When it comes to helicopters, nine of them operate in anti-submarine warfare, and four or five of them operate as early warning aircraft. Other options that can be carried on the Royal Navy carrier are the Wildcat AH-1, the RAF Chinook for transportation, and the Apache attack helicopters. That's another one for, for attack uh, helicopters. That thing looks crazy. The Elizabeth class vessel has enough decks to operate 10 medium helicopters simultaneously. The Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey is another aircraft with stovel capabilities and can be used on the carrier. Lately, in March 2021, it was revealed that the Royal Navy is considering equipping the carriers with electromagnetic capability powerful enough to launch and recover unmanned combat air vehicles. The military drones could operate Dang. in various different missions and help the carrier with their versatile and multi-mission role. Yeah, for sure. What makes the Elizabeth class so powerful? Yes. The HMS Queen Elizabeth, the lead ship of the Elizabeth class, is the largest and most powerful ship that ever served the Royal Navy. In total, the ship can carry up to 72 aircraft, and with the new additions of the F-35Bs, the vessel carries some of the most advanced jets and helicopters in the world. The AW-101 performs outstandingly well in anti-submarine warfare, and you already know the power of the F-35 Lightning II. The carriers of Elizabeth class are considered super carriers, as they are huge. Almost yes, three yes. times biggest than the invisible class carriers. I would definitely consider this a super carrier, hands down, hands down, and one of the best, if not the best in the world. I would like to see a comparison between, I guess, the aircraft carrier's rival, I guess you could say, of the U.S. carriers, because this thing seems phenomenal. They might, ha they might be built for slightly different purposes, so it might be really hard. And very dangerous. The excellent systems and radars, advanced jets, and helicopters make the Elizabeth-class carriers the most powerful outside the United States. The U.K. carrier strike groups are one of the biggest nightmares of the seas for the hostile fleets of the Royal Navy. And that concludes the video. If I was British, I would be extremely proud of the military and especially the Navy. Beautiful ship, powerful ship as we saw, very, very deadly. What they have there is just, it's a, it's a fortress. It is a massive, massive fortress on top of all of the, the strike group companions, if you will, with it. And I like how it has two 
elevators, it looks like. I don't know if the U.S. carriers have two. It almost seems like they have one. But what are your feelings towards this? Uh, it seems like the U.K. is really doing a good job at expanding their military, building it up, and keeping it top-notch, top-tier in the world, hands down. But I'd like to hear your thoughts about this ship, military in general, the Navy, the aircraft that's on here, and how proud are you? I would be. I think this is, uh, this is amazing. And why there's two towers on it. Those are the questions. There's multiple videos that I want to do on top of this one, and I think this is a fantastic place to start. So thank you for watching. Thanks for joining, and we'll do more of these in the near future. Have a good rest of your day. I'm distracted by watching this.